Okay, let's go ahead and build a main power harness for the Holly Dominator. Uh, also fits the Holly HP and some of the other Holly ECUs out there. This kit includes a fit about 15 feet of 10 gauge wire, uh, red and black. Uh, the actual connector for the main plug for the power on the ECU, a fuse holder, and also um, the terminals that will take you right into the battery itself. One thing that's uh, nice about building your own harness is sometimes if you buy an, an off-the-shelf finished harness that's not the right length, it's not quite exactly what you want, you're not maybe able to put the fuse uh, in the harness exactly where you want, uh, but building it yourself, you can you can loom it how you want, you can uh, put sheathing on it, and make the, the exact lengths and make it a lot cleaner than... Uh, let's say maybe what uh, what you might buy off the shelf in a completed form. All right, the first thing we're going to do is connect the harness, the wiring to the ECU and the plug of the ECU. Um, this is a typical dominator, and the plug. Let's see, let's see if we can get that there. That's the side that goes into the ECU, and this is the side where the wires will come in. And you can see it right there. Now, these are labeled A and B, but just remember that the top side right here is the one that has the power to it. So we're going to go ahead and use red up here on the top and then the black one on the bottom. So the way that this works is we've got the main plastic piece of the plug. It is sealed. And then the terminals that go in and then the seals for the terminal and then a TPA. They call this a terminal position assurance. This basically latches it in to make sure that the wires stay where they're supposed to be. Okay, so the first thing we did was strip a little bit of the insulation off the wires. You just need to strip enough to where the strands actually fit inside the, the crimping area. This is actually a double crimp style like we've shown in the past. And what we're going to do first is go ahead and put the seals on the wires. So they go on this direction because we're going to crimp around this smaller diameter. Go and slide those on a ways to kind of get them out of your way, but they do have to be on before we do the crimping. So uh, here what we're going to do is slide this up here. Let's go ahead and get this crimped. I'm going to use a, a tool. You probably see have tools that have the little W shaped in there, and that's the style we're going to use. Most open uh, stamp style terminals are going to use something like this. So we'll go ahead and get this in the, the crimper. Okay, so the ratcheting style crimpers allow you to kind of hold it in there. It gives you kind of an extra hand because it's actually holding it in place. So then you'll just go ahead and slide that on in. And then we'll go ahead and make the crimp. Now that we've crimped the wire onto the terminal, we're going to go ahead and crimp our seal in there. Now this one is a little bit less of a critical crimp because it actually will be held in by the TPA that we showed you before. And it's also just kind of to grab a hold of this and, and keep it... Uh, keep it in place, but it does get captured inside the seal. So we just need to make sure this kind of squeezes down around the seal itself. We'll go ahead and do that. Do a little bit of a big bite on these, these ones. All right, now that that's grabbing a hold of it, it can't be pulled out. It's it's held in position. Sometimes these uh, uh, terminals will get tweaked a little bit. You can kind of bend them to straighten everything out once they're all crimped on just to kind of make sure everything's straight. So we can go ahead and repeat this process for the power wire. Now that we've got the ground wire done. Okay, let's go ahead and crimp the terminal onto the, the 10 gauge wire here. I've got this set up. The ratcheting crimpers actually uh, work out well because it allows you to, to kind of hold them in place and not have to keep pressure on it with your hand. It just kind of holds it in there. So we'll go ahead and get this in the right spot. Then we'll go ahead and crimp this down. We're in the 10 gauge location on the crimper because it's a 10 gauge wire. And we went ahead and got that crimped. Got that W shape around there. Now we can go ahead. Sometimes it takes a little bit of tweaking with the terminal once you've crimped it. But now we can go ahead and slide the, the seal in there. And this is a little bit less critical of a crimp because it's just really holding that seal in there. And uh, really the rest of the connector kind of holds it in. But it's a good way to kind of kind of pinch that down so it doesn't it doesn't move around at all. Um, so just go ahead. I mean, this, this could literally even be done with a small set of pliers just to kind of hug that down. But we'll go ahead and use these crimpers. You'll notice that uh, part of this crimper doesn't have the W shape. It's just round. It says for insulation. So we're going to go ahead and use that to crimp around this... Uh, the seal here and just kind of give it a squeeze down there so it uh, it wraps around there just kind of gives kind of hugs onto that seal it doesn't have to be anything you don't want to crimp it too much you don't want to kind of overdo it so uh, like I said even sometimes a pair of needle nose pliers you can just kind of hug that around there so that the seal doesn't want to move on you all right so you can see there you got the the W crimp that grabs onto the wire and you can see that this uh, 
this is just kind of hugging on that seal but the seal is, is firm in there and it can't come out so now that we've got both of these crimped we can go ahead and insert them to the connector itself now remember the way it plugs in is that we want the power side on the top and the ground side on the bottom so you can see here simply insert that in you'll hear it, hear it click so that means the terminal is in place and we can go ahead and do the same thing with the black side the ground okay we've got our wires here and then really all we need to do from here is to put the clip in the tpa now one thing i will say is if you do need to take these out let's say maybe for some reason you got them in the wrong location or whatnot um, you can use you need to put it on both sides but use just a small pin or even like a, uh, a paper clip or something or something of this nature on each side of it and that will release the clips and you can remove the terminal okay so we'll go ahead and put the tpa on clips in just as easy as that and then we'll just make sure that everything seems like it will uh, clip into the ecu correctly and and whatnot so we'll go ahead and give that a try give it a little wiggle around it seems like it uh connected just right give these a tug make sure everything feels like they're in place remove the plug take a second look and make sure the terminals look like they're still in there in the correct place and they are all right, so next, it uh, looks like everything's good to go, and we can move into inserting and installing the fuse holder. Okay, now we need to determine where we want to put the fuse holder in, and this is going to depend on your application, so um, we'll just kind of use an arbitrary point, but it's going to go in the power side, and so we're going to assume that we're going to want to put the, uh, the fuse holder about this far away from the connector. So we'll go ahead and... Uh, set this up and install the the fuse holder so this fuse holder is uh you know has a few pieces here um the terminals that go in here it's actually a sealed connection uh right there and it's sealed sealed on both sides so it's a you know weatherproof unit uh but this is a little bit different uh this is actually a pull to seat so the first thing we're going to do is actually slide the wire all the way through the connector go ahead and slide it a ways up so pull the seat means that we've got to put this wire through before we can crimp the terminals on and seat the terminals. So go ahead and slide that through a little bit more and then we'll strip a little wire off and uh, go into crimping the terminals. You can see it's sealed up there on that bottom side. So that just that seal stays in there. Slide them through and we'll strip some wire and go into the crimping. All right, so we have a little bit of insulation stripped off, uh, just enough to feed it through into the terminal with, uh, you know, being able to get all those copper strands uh, inserted into the crimping area. So then we're going to go ahead and crimp that. Okay. And this does have a secondary crimp that's a similar thing. This is just going to go ahead and crimp around the insulation. And we'll do that for both of them. And then we'll be able to seat it into the fuse holder. Okay, so once you get those uh, both crimped, you start sliding them back in. You can see the direction and kind of see the way that these go in. So on the clip side, it's going to look like this. And on the non-clip side, the terminal's going to look like that. That's the direction they go in as we slide them in. So we can go ahead and you'll, you should be able to hear a click as soon as we get them in. There we go. That one's seated in. You can kind of see it push the seal out a little bit, which is okay. Just push that back in. Not a problem. Then we'll go ahead and start pulling this one back through. All right, so now we can just... Uh, Kind of push that seal back in, make sure it's seated up in there and giving us some, some weatherproofing there. So yeah, so that's really, it kind of looks like a connector. Um, I guess it kind of is a connector. However, what you're going to do is you're going to slide your 40 amp fuse in there. And that's what's going to provide us protection, uh, circuit protection on the main wire, uh, main power wire into the ECU. So that goes there. And then this here is a cap that covers it off and, and seals up for you around that surface. So that stays sealed up. And then we have a, um, a little ear right here, a little tab that you can fasten that down and, and put it where you want, keep it out of the way. If you want to just kind of loom it up into the harness itself, this can easily be clipped off and you can uh, that won't be in your way if you just kind of want to uh, loom it right back into your harness, which some people do. So there is, we've gone through the main connector going into the ECU. Now we've got our, our fuse holder uh, ready to go. So now all we need to do is just uh, terminate the length for the battery and uh, the harness will be done and you can sheath however you want uh, and, and just kind of go through and make sure that it's, it's the exact length for your application. 
Okay, we've now got our main power plug for the ECU. We've got a fuse holder, and this is only about five feet, but the kit comes with 15 feet of cable. And this could this could be in any configuration. This distance could be anything you want. This could come out far. It could come in tight. You could put it more parallel with the, the harness, but it gives you options to do it exactly as you want. So the last thing we need to do is make sure we have our length right. And we, it comes with two terminals, uh, a set of like 3 8 and 5 16 about 10 millimeters or 8 millimeters, and it allows you to go ahead and put that on the end, terminate it to the battery, and then uh, pretty much complete. You can sheath it however you want um, with like a heat shrink or some sort of um, other type sheathing. Um, but we'll go ahead and drop our heat, little pieces of heat shrink that it comes with on first. And then we will go ahead and crimp on our terminals and heat shrink that on. Okay, let's go ahead and heat shrink these on. All right, the, the heat shrink that we use is some glue line heat shrink, so it's glued on there. It's not gonna go anywhere. Seals up the connection point. And from there, you can just go ahead and set this thing up on your on your vehicle and connect the the battery and the power connector to the ECU and you're ready to go. If you found this video helpful, check out some of our other videos.